keep coming to Jewish and not Sunday school, followed by Hebrew school, until you become of age and begin preparing. <laughs> begin preparing for your own which is defined as, quote, the religious initiation ceremony of a Jewish child who has reached the age of 13 and is regarded as ready to observe religious precepts and eligible to take part in public worship, end quote. Once I completed my bar mitzvah, I had the opportunity to become a madrik, or translated helper. This involves a wide variety of grueling tasks as our main objective is to keep track of and entertain children aged 3 to 13. This role has not only allowed me to sympathize with my parents, but also decide not to have children without any chapelle. <laughs> <laughs> this year, I was asked to become a teacher, to which I happily agreed, for it was, in a way, an honor to be a teacher at, just, at such a young age. A week later, my heart sank when I received Since there is not much you can teach four-year-olds, I am left desperately trying to entertain in a never-ending attitude for two and a half hours. At the beginning of the year, I tried to be an authoritative figure, demanding we complete the activities I had planned out. What a nightmare. Unlike us older kids who put down our heads and bored. If one of my students get bored, which is usually after five minutes, something short circuits in their head Hey, either cry, yell, I'm all over you, or the most common what I call disease, <laughs> which means run, run fast, and don't dare look back. <laughs> <laughs> over many Sundays, I became good at writing the blank days or the fingers in the mouth that was indicative of a short circuit on his way. This has allowed me to learn which activities they like the best, but more importantly, how to introduce new activities. This leads me to the topic of my speech. Social experience. <laughs> Some of you have may have realized that you just participated in a social experiment of my own. Social experiments are defined as, quote, a type of research done in fields like psychology or sociology to see how people behave in certain situations or how they respond to particular policies or programs." End quote. My experiment was an example of the particular policy or program, dropping my cards, and how people behave in certain situations, the audience's reaction. Since I couldn't have known what the response would be, I hypothesized what might result. Some may have laughed, woken up, been uncomfortable, turn to their friend to see their reaction before having their own helped me, or simply not knowing what to do. All of which would be considered normal responses to the stimulus I presented. This compares to the children I teach at Sunday school. I mentioned I more importantly learned how to introduce new activities. Eventually I started arriving at Sunday school with almost a dozen activities to do which I would announce one by one and watch their response. This seems very simple, but when you run the risk of triggering the zoomies, you must be prepared to cycle to the next activity when their response seems questionable. The experiments can range from unintentional childhood antics, such as standing behind a door waiting to scare a friend, to authentic study research. The difference between the two 
is how one chooses to look at why the reaction they received actually occurred. In 1895, an American psychologist named Norman Triplett constructed one of the earliest known social field psychology, social experiments, concluding a child is more likely to ride a bike faster when with a friend. While Triplett is known for the first experiment, Floyd H. Allport is considered the pioneer of social psychology based on a systematic, controlled approach frequently used in utilizing social experiments to advance his research. Some famous experiments include the Bobo doll experiment, class dividing, Ash's conformity study, and Fancy's looking chamber. The class dividing experiment, developed by third grade teacher Jane Elliott, focused on intergroup conflicts, racism, <coughs> and prejudice. Elliot divided her class into two groups, blue-eyed and brown-eyed students. She explained to the class that for the day, the blue-eyed students would have dominance in the classroom over all of the brown-eyed students. Students immediately took up a defensive pose, and blue-eyed students even began to bully the brown-eyed students. The next day, she swapped the roles of authority and observed their similar responses. When Elliot ended the experiment, the students on both sides embraced each other. The children's behavior is referred to as deindividualization, defined as a phenomenon in which people engage in seemingly impulsive, deviant, and sometimes violent acts in situations when they believe they cannot be personally identified. In experiments like Elliot's, there are many things a psychologist is looking for. Whatever the stimulus may be, the response is what is observed and recorded using videos, pictures, or notes. In order to make accurate conclusions, a researcher must present their situation or stimulus to multiple participants, but do so consistently. Psychologists focus on sensation, perception, attention, memory, and cognition and emotion when determining what behavior is good or troublesome. It is equally important to research and understand both the good and the bad. Troublesome responses usually refer to aggression, prejudice or discrimination, stereotypes, or a lack of social cognition. The famous Bobo doll experiment, conducted in 1961 by Albert Bandura, is a prime example why understanding bad behavior is beneficial. The experiment was conducted by Bandura and a team of researchers who used preschoolers as their participants. The researchers repeatedly verbally and physically abused an inflatable doll in front of each child. The researchers then left the room and observed the child's behavior. As you might have guessed, the children adopted the same behavior and attacked the inflatable doll. This experiment was pivotal in the advancement of social psychology because it proved children as young as preschool will mimic behavior. Bandura's new understanding of potential reasons behind aggression has helped millions of children around the world. It has encouraged teachers who have an aggressive student to maybe question what their mom and dad are like rather than discipline the child over and over again, which just makes the situation worse. Human behavior is partially individual due to our genetic makeup and partially personal preferences. Many things compel humans to act, such as love or hate, fear or curiosity, passion or dissatisfaction, snakes, fresh baked cookies, a green light, or maybe walking out of class to see Roots Builder Dr. Pepper again. <laughs> These stimuli are better called motivation or a reason to act. Every human and better yet every organism on earth has motivation, therefore it is essential from a social psychology perspective to understand why and what it is. Psychologists Lichtenfeld and von Hoff observed that students who would say, in math, I work hard to get good grades, received immediate success in class, but faltered the longer they attended.
While students who would say, I invest a lot of effort in math because I am interested in the subject, often exhibited continued success in math several years down the road. Social experiments have and will continue to better our understanding of humans and how they interact. New understandings of human behavior are developed by psychologists but can be beneficial to everybody. Someone who sees a homeless man on the side of the road may think of drugs or a lack of motivation in school while failing to realize the man lost everything in a house fire. This is referred to as the fundamental attribution error and is one of many social restrictions humans experience. The level of fun in social gatherings is often limited by underlying social expectations and assumptions, all of which are normal and human, but why accept grudging social pressures if we don't need to? The next time someone is short with you, <clears throat> consider they may have just had a rough night. That being said, I encourage you all to look beyond visible behavior as you move forward. Going to college next year, we seniors will be living a social experiment and conducting our own as we find new friends. Consider moving outside of your comfort zone and saying hi to someone new because they just might have been the friend you never knew you needed.